Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my program. I'm Armando F. Sanchez. We do a series of shows, Latino role models, Latina role models, people that are doing many unique things around the world. We interview people on the future, uh, upcoming fourth industrial revolution. It's just a mixture of potpourri of issues that eventually they all tie together. They seem sort of like a puzzle, but they all come together eventually. And part of that puzzle that helps us understand, especially ourselves, especially the perspective of humanism, uh, how to understand ourselves better, understand our community, and we look to be proactive, look to be more of a healthy community for ourselves and our children and our future generations. And someone that's doing that right now from Austin, Texas, and is creating uh, an organization who already did it, and we're gonna get his uh, take on the idea of why he created this organization, what he's doing, and we're gonna invite all our viewers to contact him and learn more about what he's doing. I think it's fantastic, him and his wife work as a team. So Dr. Emmanuel Samaripa, who is joining us today. I'm gonna, he's a psychologist. I want to let him tell the story and see where he's going and why he created this organization along with his beautiful wife. Uh, thank you, Dr. Samaripa. What, tell us about what you're doing about your organizations that you posted. I picked up on it. I was really excited to see this Chicana Chicano psychology. Yeah, I mean, thank you, Armando, for letting me um, come on your show. And I'm really happy that um, some of the postings reached you and, and you were able to see what we're doing. Um, yeah, we're based out of Austin and um, myself and I work with my wife. Uh, we formed about, um, about a, I guess almost two years ago, um, the Institute of Chicana Chicano Psychology. And one of the reasons uh, that uh, we did that, it's been a, a dream of mine for years and years, is because I feel that the psychology field and the mental health field have a lot to offer to all of us and to our community. However, um, they have fallen short in a lot of ways when responding to uh, our community specifically. And so, um, you know, one of the ways that we see that is, this, you know, is um, taking a, a very disconnected pro approach to what's happening with our people. So, um, so what, we're, what we are trying to do is make the work that's being done by other Latino psychologists and other Chicano psychologists, more applicable to the gente, to the people. And uh, so um, we do a lot of community workshops and we can talk a little bit more about that, some of the topics and just giving a little overview. And we also do training for other mental health professionals as well. And we do consultations uh, for organizations and agencies. Um, so we're based out of Austin, but we really do work uh, we've been invited other places so um so that's the institute and um like a lot of things in our current society the institute isn't a building it's us and the work we do so uh, it, it makes us a lot more flexible and open to uh, responding to the people um, so yeah you 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 went to a wonderful organist a uh, wonderful university notre dame uh, so yeah. I guess you're a fighting Irish, you know, you don't look very yeah. Irish, but well, yeah, that's a whole different issue. But, uh, you know, <laughs> so, so when you were in college, what inspired you to do this? Um, yeah, that's a great question because this is where it all, you know, a lot of it started. Um, in college, going into college, uh, starting from high school, I had an idea that I probably wanted a major in psychology. Uh, I, I always was interested in how people made decisions and how people, um, uh, you know, did what they did. And um, that was the beginning. But in college and also um, kind of through my life, I was always interested in um, social justice um, um, movements, civil rights movements, um, and um, educational achievement of our, of our people was always a big issue for me. Um, a lot of my papers in college were about, you know, the uh, uh, Latino education and um, and so I kind of was walking in these two paths like that was my passion. And then I had this major. I was in psychology and um, and it seemed like a, I was so interested in that and it seemed like a good career move. Um, but one day, probably as a junior or a sophomore, I can't remember, I was in the library and I came across a book that said Chicano psychology. And it was the first time I had seen those two terms in the same time. 
And in the book, the first edition that came out in 77, it even says there that that's the first published material that says Chicano psychology. And the book, uh, this was in the mid 90s for me when I discovered it and it was published in 77. So that was my bridge. That was like, okay, like there are people out there, other Chicano psychologists that are addressing the needs of our people. It will, you know, never went mainstream, obviously, because there wasn't, you know, in any of my classes. But what was important for me is there was groundwork. People had already been doing this. And that was it. Once I saw that, I was like, I was all about Chicano psychology. And I think in 98, luckily enough, um, after 16 years from the previous conference, they had another conference at Michigan State University. And I was, at that time, I was in graduate school when that happened at University of Wisconsin. So um, I, I drove over there, made, you know, and I was able to meet a lot of the people that were in that first edition of 1977. Wow. And so, um, so since then, I've been about teaching people about the history of Chicano psychology, just like the history of our people and the history of the accomplishments. We're not, we have a history of doing great things in all fields. And so it's, we're not just new, right? We're not just, uh, and so that's why it's important to teach people about the history of Chicano psychology and also um, where the field is going now and what we're doing to address the needs of our people now and going forward. You know, this is probably a very tough question to ask because it's the field is so broad, but I'll try. Yeah. What would you say are the top three issues that are that need to be addressed more immediately? Because maybe it's size, it's importance, I don't know. But the top three issues that I think, you know, we should all be aware of. Um, I think in a broad level, well, I think one of the top issues is the way our youth, it's focused on, on youth, uh, the way, what our, our experience is in the, the public school system. Um, because through that experience, you have, um, and in the schools that, are, that our youth go to a lot of the times, um, there's a lot of uh, intersection with economic injustice um, and, um, lowered expectations and lowered opportunities. So that's where there are uh, high risk behaviors that a lot of our youth are exposed to. Um, so that could be substance abuse, could be lowered academic achievement. And the thing that sticks with us, I think, is there is no support to facilitate a positive sense of self. Uh, there's nothing in the school systems that facilitates um, a strong cultural identity. And the only reason that seems quote unquote different for our people is because it's absent. Um, if we look at all other populations or the majority population in the school system, every day they see reflections of people that have names like them or look like them or they have some kind of subconscious connection to what success looks like. And it's the norm. It's just there in every grade in every book. And this is a very talked about question, but it's also, you know, very poignant. When you have a community that's being educated, you know, K through 12 through 16, and those images and those stories are not there that reflect people that they grow up with, um, it sends a very strong, silent, usually message. Uh, and so um, we need more explicit ways to promote a positive sense of cultural self and highlight the, the strengths that our families and our communities come with. Um, with that, a lot of the issues I think can, you know, it, uh, can be addressed. Um, Especially, so you know, I, if I, you know, when uh, you remind me now that California, uh, and I'm not sure of Texas, California's children in the public school system throughout the state, the majority is Latino, Latina. Right. So what a critical issue this is. Absolutely. And, and you know, um, you made me remember, I, I got a call from someone in New Zealand, in Australia, and they were saying that they were having the similar problems with their indigenous group. So it's not, yes, it's Latino, but it also applies around the world where people of the minority is not seen or integrated into the majority. And this is causing a major conflict around the world. Yes, absolutely, especially when um, 
there's a history of marginalization. It becomes, it becomes systemic. Once it becomes systemic, and by that I mean generation after generation, textbook after textbook, you know, um, things go on and on, then um, there are less individuals making um, choices to purposefully exclude certain populations. So then people are like, well, we're not, you know, we're not making these policies to exclude anybody. So you have a lot of good intentioned people, but once it becomes systemic, that's the, uh, you know, that's the insidiousness of that kind of institutionalized uh, policies, then, um, then it's hard to adjust the real issue because then people feel like, well, I'm not doing anything personally or individually, but it's part of the policy. And then changing po educational policies, business policies, government policies, is like trying to turn the Titanic around. It's very difficult, you know, the weight is so tremendous, the inertia. And you know, you, you, you struck a nerve in me, a real, a real good one. Uh, I just finished doing a show a couple of days ago with uh, Dr. Justin Lee from Oxy. And mm -hmm. the reason I picked him up is the idea that now we have an additional layer of problem that the people that are writing the software uh -huh. that will go out now has the bias in it. And so now it's dawning on me, the idea that you said, you know, these people that are consciously or unconsciously are marginalizing other people. Now, if they're writing the software, now they're taking those biases and including them in the software. So yes. it's like, oh my God, now we got a whole different problem on, on our hands. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I don't know we have, we, I know we don't have too much time, but I'll give one quick example of what I noticed of that maybe 10 years ago is anytime you're writing a sentence in Microsoft Word, and this has to do with the language issue as well and, and the history of the way Spanish is, it's kind of more hospitable. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a hospitality in the language in certain ways. So when I'm writing, a lot of the times, I write in past tense, and Microsoft Word will always give me that little green underline to suggest that I'm more active in how I write. It wants me to to be to say everything in a in a first person active voice as opposed to something uh, as opposed to a passive and grammatically it's fine. It's just the choice. Yeah, so the bias part, of that about the software. You know, Before it, we continue, can can we give a contact information for your wonderful organization? I think your work is fantastic, and I'm hoping that your information and your work gets spread across the nation. So could you please give us a link or information? Yeah, um, you can find this on in two ways, Facebook. And if you type in Institute of Chicana, Chicano, Chicana slash Chicano Psychology, uh, you'll find us. And then uh, we do have a website and the website is, um, I'll, I'll have to spell it, you know, uh, because it starts with an X, uh, it's X I C A N P S Y C H dot org, and the way it's pronounced is Chican Psych, and sometimes Chicano is spelled with an X in the beginning mm -hmm. because it comes from the the Nawa uh, language. So um, so it's Chican Psych dot org. Okay, so well, the best ways to contact us, yeah. What what is your you cover many grounds. What would you say is your primary goal through your organization as you're reaching out to your community and beyond? Um, I think one of our primary goals is this idea of self determination. Uh, and one of the ways we do that is in our community workshops and in the workshops I do with professionals. We always lead with the strengths of our people, the cultural strengths. So one of the primary goals is when it comes to the community workshops is having people realize that we do come from families and a culture that already has many strengths in them, but we have rarely the opportunity to talk through that. And once we have, once those platicas begin, and we're like, oh yeah, my, my, my abuela did that, or my mom did that, or they said that, and we talked, well, where did that come from? It came from survival, it came from needing to problem solve, it came from um, our culture's emphasis on uh, familia and community, and, um, 
And so we always lead with um, cultural strengths of, uh, that we have in our people so that they can take that and move forward. And then again, this idea of self-determination, like they can decide how they want to move through the world. And, um, and so we highlight those. We highlight our, you know, ancestral strengths, you know, our ancestral, you know, indigenous uh, concepts of wellness as well, because we've been cut off from that. And then we, we say that and we, we introduce those ideas. And then we say, well, how can we take these basic ideas and move forward? Okay, I'll give one quick example, because it, you can see how it combines with what we're seeing in the mental health field as well. For a lot of indigenous people, the elements are important. And I'll use tierra, I'll use land, right? Mm -hmm. The land. And in our everyday world, we have shoes and socks and we're in concrete and we're, we rarely touch the grass, for example, right? And so when people are in distress, a lot of the times, like one of the things we can do is start to reconnect to the land. And a very basic thing is take off your shoes, go outside and just feel the dirt and the grass beneath you. And in the field now, we call that grounding. And, and a lot of psychotherapists, when people are in trauma, they'll say, we, you know, one of the things we need to help, we have all these techniques about how to ground somebody because of their trauma and their distress, they're all over the place, metaphorically, right? And so I, like that is met medicine that has come from a lot of ancient peoples and it's literally grounding, right? So instead of me teaching them new techniques about Oh, you know, what you need to do is you need to ground yourself, which is what a lot of therapists would say, you know, it's this kind of language way of talking. I am introducing that, but what I'm saying is you already have this in your history. This is reconnecting to what a lot of indigenous peoples have done. They, they knew how to ground themselves, feel the earth, and let that kind of go into the earth, you know, let that go and fall from you. And if you look at common current psychotherapy techniques, they say the same thing. But again, one of my things is a lot of what we do and a lot of what is from our people, people are doing now, but it's not new. You know, it's just, um, it, it's just introduced in a different way. So when in those platicas, this idea of self-determination becomes very real because then they're not learning or taking from other, you know, traditions. It's reconnecting to something that they come from and they can use it going forward um, in a lot of ways. So, uh, I hope that's a good example or it makes sense. You know, if I can just quickly add to that, you made me think the image I got in my head is how many Latinos all the way down to South America, they sit down and they either knit or they draw or they make these beautiful images up on the walls, a lot of color, a lot yeah. of artistic work. So. It's not only just creative work, it's also psychological work that is very common in our community. Yep. I mean, kids Absolutely. doing cartoons or doodling. Uh, you know, right. I'm, I'm thinking of Dr. Aldama, you know, who's talked about this, uh, cartooning. It's not just cartooning, it's also psychological pacification where you're sort of calming yourself through the process. I hadn't made that connection until you mentioned it. Yeah, I, and so that, that's a, an example of what I, what you know what one of the goals are is leading with our strengths, connecting in real examples what we mean by that, and then uh, then you know facilitating the self determination of our own needs and our own healing and our own progress moving forward because you know our communities continue to grow um, and. We have a lot to offer ourselves and, and in our society. And um, I think this is often said, but I think it's very true. I think we've been misunderstood. And I think we are educated in a system that continues to give those misunderstood ideas. So then we misunderstand ourselves. Um, <laughs> going through the same class. Again, ahead of you. I understand, man. Yeah. Um, I, as we're we going to as we're coming close to the, to the end of the show, I want to say one thing before we start with the process is the idea that, number one, I applaud what you're saying, that one of the highest ranking issues is our future, and that is our youth. And like you mentioned, the whole idea, and I'm reading my notes here, um, the, the risk that we run as a nation, not as a culture, 
the nation, if we take all these people and then all of a sudden we say, well, they're Latinos, they're in a whole different category. If we don't erase that real quickly, given the dynamics of what's coming at all of us in right. the near future, we're all going to suffer as a country. We're not going to suffer as a culture. So right. you're bringing that issue to mind, and I want to thank you for that. The whole idea of, of strengthening cultural identity of the kids so that they can be more productive, in, not necessarily in labor, but more productive as in their lives and offer more in support to each other. So I applaud what you're doing, and I hope uh, our viewers contact you. And that leads me to my next question. Could you please repeat the contact information? Yes. Uh on Facebook, we're the Institute of Chicana, Chicano Psychology, and that's Chicana slash Chicano. And, uh, and our website is Chican Psych, X I C A N P S Y C H dot org. Um, and if you visit us on those sites, you can send me a message, you can send us a message. Um, and, uh, you know, one way to conceptualize really quickly what we're doing is instead of always taking a top-down approach and talking kind of like down to the people. We have all this research. Um, it really is kind of a, a circle. Um, we have information to give, but what is the pe what do the people need and hearing what they need and what's important to them. So one of the things that we'd like to say is we're, you know, we could characterize that we characterize as like hentha psychology, psychology of the hentha, psychology of the people. Um, and I think that's distinct. In, in the work we're trying to do. You mentioned somewhere along our conversation when we were preparing for the show, hint psychology. My God, I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that came from you. Uh -huh. you're, you're to be congratulated on that. It really compartmentalizes a lot of things about empowerment, strengths, proactivity, self-determination. I love it. You're credited worldwide. <laughs> Folks, he's the one that said it, hint psychology. I love it. Uh, your closing <laughs> statements. Um, well, I'm just appreciative of this opportunity to talk with you, Armando. It's been fantastic. And, um, you know, my closing statement is, I, is really that I feel very hopeful and excited about the potential that our people have. And my mission and my passion is always about talking about Chicano psychology because it is what we have to offer to others and to ourselves. Um, and I can't underestimate the, um, the notion of having a strong sense of self, sense of identity. And for us, um, that also means having a strong sense of family and a strong sense of community. And I think that should be rewarded. It should be praised. It should be recognized. Um, we need a good balance in our society of this individualism, this individual achievement, and also our connectedness to, to others around us, our relatedness. And uh, we need both. And um, sometimes I feel we're too much on the, you know, self-sufficiency piece without the relatedness, you know. So we have self-esteem, but we don't have relational esteem, right? Well, you know, things like that. We need a balance. And, uh, and I think that's what we're doing. And I feel really hopeful I feel really good about the, the feedback we get from the people that come to our platicas and our workshops. Um, it's always very, we don't plan it this way, but it's always turns out to be very powerful. It gets very emotional sometimes. Um, and you know, people say that this is, this is what I've been looking for. And we don't elicit that. It, it just a lot of the times it's a very genuine response. And so I feel humbled, but very hopeful and excited about the work we're gonna continue to do. Well, because of the people, they're saying that it's important to them. So. I uh, I applaud your work because you know I'm familiar a little bit with psychologists or the notion of psychology because of friends that I've had, but you're very unique. I, I what I find and what I'm listening and hearing, uh, and I hope you know, listening to the responses of the viewers, is that you're focusing on strengths, you're focusing right. on how to develop. Uh, see what's already there and sort of put it together, not so much like discover it, like you don't have it and we're going to start from scratch. And that's what I'm learning from you for throughout the discussion. So I like your new take on it. I'm not quite sure I've ever heard it that way.
but I see the idea of working, adding to the strengths rather than right. sort of going back to the weaknesses. Right. And I think with that, when we address our needs, it's, it's already going to be different and feel different you know, because we have needs. Wow, that's excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, please, I'm sorry we have to end the show, but uh, again, please contact Dr. Emanuel Samaripa. He gave us his website. Go to him. And I think the idea that people that are looking for new ways, new perspectives, or sort of testing what they're doing or what could be done in their community if we don't have some kind of psychological support, I really, really recommend strongly that you go to Dr. Samaripa and get details how to create this organization. Maybe you don't have a psychologist in your community, but you can start with social workers or other methods, or thanks to the internet, yeah, we can do seminars with you straight from over there to you worldwide as well. Absolutely. So I wish you continual success. Look forward to having you on future shows. Uh, I'm benefiting just a great deal myself and looking at my own strengths. I've been looking, well, what am I doing for familia and my gente? So I applaud your work. And I look forward to having you in future shows. I would love it. Thanks a lot, Armando. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. Adios. Adios.